Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Tomorrow's Tech Today, bringing you the latest in technology, talent, transformational change and of course tech as a force for good. I'm your host Professor Sally Eves and today we're focusing in on the critical non-profit sector and how data analytics and integration can enable scalable impact with meaning, a cause really close to heart. So I'm delighted now to be joined by three guests that really embody this focus. Now I'm delighted to meet in person in a few weeks at the upcoming Click World event. So I'm joined by Julie Kay, VP for Sustainability and Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at Click, and Hal Monharis, Data Visualization Developer at C40 Cities, and Andrew Schroeder, Vice President of Research and Analysis at Direct Relief. So without further ado, a very warm welcome to the show. And I'd love to hear from you all kind of in your own words, if that's OK. So maybe, Julie, over to you first, a little bit more about yourself, your, you know, your commitment to this area and your role at Click. Certainly, Sally. Um, I'm Julie Kay, the Vice President of Sustainability and Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, as well as the Executive Director of Click.org at Click. Um, I've had a long career at Click, and um, I'm privileged actually to fill the role that I do, which is all about supporting organizations as well as our partners in creating a world that's sustainable and supportive of vulnerable populations and our planet. Fantastic, Julie. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Angel, if I could go to you next. Yes, I am Angel Monjaraz. Uh, I am uh, a CD intelligence analyst and click administrator at, at C4E and C4E cities. And um, previously, I was uh, I, I've been in the click verse, as I call it, for 14 years now, and I've been able to help um, uh, former customers, uh, a few thousand people, get a uh, handle on their data. But now I am trying to help the remaining eight billion. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that as well. And I love that ecosystem that's coming to the fore already as well. I think the power of partnership is so strong, particularly around the non-for-profit sector as well. And Andrew, I'd love to hear from you now as well and learn more about your role at Direct Relief. Thanks, Sally. So I'm the, my name's Andrew uh, Schroeder. I'm the Vice President for Research and Analysis at Direct Relief, and I'm the co-director of the Crisis Ready Project with my colleagues at Harvard University. Um, Direct Relief is uh, principally about uh, medical assistance to the most vulnerable throughout the world. Um, so we help access to essential medicines through efficient supply chains, and we apply data to ensure that we're getting to the right people when they need it with the most essential medicines and other medical resources that make sure that they have continuous access to care all the time, and particularly in disasters. Absolutely amazing work, all three of you. And you actually just brought back a memory from my childhood, and Andrew, when you were speaking there. My first ever non for profit project was kind of disaster relief in a box. Um, and we did that in our local school. I think I was about 10 or so at the time. And it made me smile because actually I don't think I'd be even allowed to do that now because we were going around schools getting donations of hammers and all sorts of kit and health kit and everything in a box that was delivered to the disaster recovery area. So love everything that all, all three of you saying there right across you know, humanitarian relief, but also challenges around sustainability and climate change as well. So without further ado, you know, the power of data, we're hearing data driven kind of said everywhere across verticals at the moment, but possibly never more important and also some challenges around this as well for the non-for-profit sector. Perhaps, Julie, if we could start with you to kind of set the scene around what you're seeing, what you're assisting at Click as well, kind of the role that data can play to help this, to enable organisations to address some of these really you know, complicated and messy and in many ways interrelated challenges as well, whether that's climate or crisis response. So perhaps, Julie, if we could start with you. Yeah, certainly, Sally. So about um, just over 10 years ago, Click set out on a mission actually to, to touch a billion lives is what it was called back then. And what, how we were going to accomplish that was through the use of Click software and by partnering with nonprofits around the world, we really wanted to leverage our strengths, which are our people and our, our Click products, um, to really make the world a better place right, for vulnerable populations and our planet. And so we started working with organizations and very quickly learned that this, uh, the nonprofit sector in particular, um, didn't have access to technologies like ours, 
um, very intelligent people on the ground serving various missions of humanitarian or natural disaster relief or protecting our environment. But, you know, just having tools and having data to help drive that mission forward was something that was somewhat lacking. Um, and it, but it wasn't out of interest. <laughs> it was just because, you know, uh, organizations were struggling with spreadsheets, trying to collect data in the field, trying to report that information back to their supporters. And it was just kind of a, a mess, quite honestly, um, in kind of being able to manage all of this data that was needed to drive an, a, a mission forward. And so as, as we started working with them, we quickly realized how valuable the Click Analytics engine could be for organizations. And uh, here we are 10 years later and incredibly proud to support hundreds of nonprofits globally uh, with Click software to help them leverage data to support their mission. Oftentimes it starts with a nonprofit wanting to analyze where their support is coming from, right? Like, uh, you know, where are they getting their financial resources to do good in the world? And from there, we start looking at the impact that a nonprofit might be having on the ground, right? Getting survey data, um, analyzing the number of surgeries taking place. In Andrew at Direct Relief's case, analyzing the amount of medication being distributed across potentially, you know, camps serving refugees in Europe. Um, to now, you know, focused on obviously addressing the issues regarding climate change and partnering with C40 Cities to leverage data to help their member cities prioritize and make decisions to achieve the goals that we all need to achieve. So it's really been a, a journey, um, a learning journey for ourselves here at Click, as well as, you know, in partnering with great organizations like the two that we have here today. Um, and, you know, data can really form the foundation of certainty in an uncertain world, right? Like in a Absolutely. kind of in a in a disastrous situation, there is a lot of chaos. Um, people want to get on the ground and help right away. And organizations that are on the front lines of that need data, need access to information quickly so they can make you know, the best decisions about where the need is the greatest and how they can prioritize their response. Absolutely, Julie. I think you know, I wrote something recently with, with, with Click actually around like active intelligence, you know, the right data to the right role at the right time, et cetera, and overcoming some of the challenges we talk about in terms of, say, integration or visibility um, and also around skills development, too. We're seeing those challenges, you know, enterprise level with organizations with, you know, typically, you know, bigger resources, for example, and depth of experience. So you can imagine, you know, for smaller organizations and for sectors that have been particularly affected with the impact of COVID and funding it, etc. too. Um, so around the non-for-profit sector, you know, typical challenges will be exacerbated as well. So it's absolutely vital. And you know what you were describing there, the role data can play, very definition of empowerment, I think, absolutely, absolutely critical. So that's wonderful. And before I bring back in um, Angel and Andrew to, to respond to that. I'd love to bring a little audience question as well. So one of the things I love to do um, at Tomorrow's Tech today is just you know, outreach to people and people have been responding with, with the conversations, et cetera, to ask what they want to know more around upcoming topic areas. So we did this ahead of this particular discussion and you know, data and tech for good more broadly, it's so close to heart to, to so many of our listeners and, and watchers here. And what people have asked more is particularly a lot of responses from NGOs and particularly from non-for-profit organizations of which I run one too. Um, and the biggest thing that was coming up is what are you seeing as the biggest opportunity, kind of changing this narrative around? We know some of the challenges, but what are you seeing in terms of scaling positive change in this area? And what would you say has been the biggest change over the last 18 months? And one person here, uh, Matthew, I'm going to mention, has been talking about how people are asking him far better kind of questions about where their data comes from. So that need to be able to kind of justify that, particularly for funding, has never been stronger and really, really interesting conversations around that. So I'd love to throw that up to anybody, actually, if you'd like to kind of who would love to take that one. But biggest challenge, biggest opportunity or the biggest change over the last 18 months. Loads of interest from our audience around that. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to start. Um, I, mean, I mean, as far as technology is concerned, the role of, you know, having, you know, having been kind of supporting organizations for 10 years for us, it's about learning, right? So the work that we 
we did to respond to the COVID pandemic, for example, actually was based on work that we learned in partnering with NGOs responding to the Ebola epidemic. Um, so just having this experience and kind of leveraging data, leveraging technology, we have the opportunity to learn how to respond most effectively so that we can get to the needs much more quickly and with the right response at the right time. So this learning journey, I think, is, is one that's very exciting because as we look forward to you know, opportunities such as leveraging AI and machine learning, you know, we could get to a point where we know what products we need to respond to a natural disaster as it is happening. And those products could be on the ground ready for people um, to be distributed um, right as soon as possible, as soon as the disaster is, uh, is finished. Absolutely. absolutely. But I'm sure Correct. Andrew and Angel have, have other... Uh, other ideas. I, I mean, I can I can just quickly point to like a, a data problem and a, a social problem. Um, the I think the and I'll start with the social. I mean, I I think that the pace of crisis in the world has accelerated. Um, it used to be uh, relatively uncommon to have um, you know sort of five alarm fire level uh, crisis response happening at any given time. And it's become normalized for us that this is all the time now. The pandemic was obviously the big change where this was uh, global uh, in scope and uh, was in, you know, sort of uh, 24 seven for years. Uh, but, you know, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the uh, the scale of the earthquake recently in Turkey and Syria, uh, in, in addition to the accelerating climate emergencies that we see, um, you know, around things like Cyclone Freddy in uh, Mozambique, where this is the highest energy storm ever recorded total um and nevertheless in a in an area which is uh, often under recognized for uh, assistance in mozambique you know the accumulation has has been geometric in scope and that's difficult to keep up with the data is also geometrically changing in scope so the amount of data that we are able to ingest access uh private data flows um have become uh, there's a movement that's been ongoing in the data for good community to make private data available for public good you know that sounds great but it poses huge challenges as well because you have scales of data that most nonprofit organizations are just not set up to manage let alone government organizations that we also may collaborate with from time to time. They don't have the hardware. They don't have the expertise often. They don't have, um, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things that are required to take the data flows and transform them into useful information, either tactically or strategically. And so, you know, that in addition to the changing pace of crisis makes it so that there's this huge opportunity to apply uh, data resources to uh, crisis, but, you know, it has changed the, uh, both the demand and the supply problem to the, to where you need to reformulate how we're doing all kinds of things. And that I think is what we're right in the middle of right now is rethinking structures and how we actually, um, you know, build, th build systems and, and organizations that are fit for purpose in this context. Great points yeah. there, Andrew. Really like that. And Angel, I'd love to bring you back in. And I'm also going to yeah. pivot to a little bit around C40 cities, if I may. I'll just make one quick point um, around what Andrew was saying there as well. And in the show notes, we'll point to some resources. I couldn't agree more about kind of the vectors of change that you're bringing to the fore there. And also WEF recently did some really interesting research talking about kind of poly risk and kind of poly level of crisis. It really kind of infused what you were saying there. So we'll put some resources around there as well. And also on some of those data points points. Some really interesting um, new work going on around data waste to data opportunity and around how some of the, the waste that we're seeing actually in data can cater to one of the challenges that I think is going to come up quite a lot around talent and, and you know skills development, etc. So just wanted to flag that. We'll pop that in the show notes because, again, a lot of people are asking us about that too. So brilliant points. Um, Angel, if I could bring you back in for your response there around kind of challenge, opportunity and change over the last 18 months. And then I'd love to kind of you take the floor, actually, to talk about your work around urban data for good and tell us more about how you're addressing some of those challenges around climate crisis. 
Yes. Uh, well, as a network of mayors or of nearly 100 cities now uh, uh, that are working together to deliver uh, the urgent action needed um, to confront the climate crisis, we handle a lot of data. So all of, all of the mayors of C40 cities are committed to using an inclusive, uh, science-based and truly collaborative approach. That means uh, we need to have confidence on where the data comes from. Either uh, we are becoming a hub of uh, climate uh, knowledge, either produced by us or, uh, col or collated from different sources. And we are in a unique position to, uh, ch to share that knowledge, not only with uh, governments and cities, but also with, with companies and individuals uh, in the form of, of uh, manuals or um, policy briefs and uh, to, so that everyone knows uh, what they are expected to do to, to become green, if, 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 if you mean, or to, to and do their part to um, avoid uh, heating uh, the globe about 1.5 degrees centigrade uh, uh, on average. That, that's our, our, our ultimate goal to uh, make reality the, the, those uh, Paris Accords. And uh, all of this knowledge that we are uh, accumulating and generating need to be put out there. And we have a, what we call the C40 Knowledge Hub, where everyone can go in and, and look at, uh, at hundreds of articles uh, related to many, many different ways they can impact uh, cl uh, climate. And all of it is supported by data because we are science-based and data-driven and it is supported by, by Click. All of those dashboards you see on our, on our Knowledge Hub are Click-powered, uh, made, made by us and constantly updated. I love that. Again, that power of community coming to the fore and that open knowledge sharing as well, which is so, so vital. And on that note as well, Angel, I wonder if we could come back as well just to talk about the session you're involved in too, because Click World coming back around the corner very, very soon. So definitely sharing more info about that. I can't wait to be there in person too. I wonder if we could just share a little bit about the session you were involved in with C40 Cities as well. But what can people expect from that discussion? There's a lot to, to talk about. We only have 45 minutes in the in the session. <laughs> so we are, we're going with uh, the, the main challenges we are facing to sort through all of the, all of that data, the very different data sources that we how we cope, uh, cope with them and how Click uh, helps us do that. And we will uh, see the uh, Knowledge Hub uh, live uh, on stage and the kind of, of uh, information everyone can access. Love that. Brilliant. Making that information more and more accessible. And again, we'll share some notes around the Knowledge Hub too. I love that. I think it's absolutely vital. So brilliant stuff. Thank you for shedding a light on that. And, and also with your work in Mexico as well. I do quite a lot with Tech to Monterey. So it's, it'd be lovely to kind of catch up on that separately too. So really interesting projects there as well. Fantastic stuff. And now perhaps Andrew, we could put it to you now to talk a little bit more from the kind of disaster relief perspective as well, kind of data and how you're using that with direct relief to really make a difference around the globe. I've been looking at some of your blog content, you know, really detailing the projects and the tangible actions you've been taking. It's pretty, pretty incredible work. So let's shine a light on that. And then we'll kind of give people a bit what to expect with the upcoming event too, just to give a flavor of what they can learn more about. But if I could hand the floor to you, how are you using data in your space? Kind of what are the key challenges that you're addressing and perhaps let's share some real stories of impact because again I think with everything that's going on in the world at the moment the different crises etc we've been mentioning actually seeing how data and people are coming together and technology of course as well to make a difference I think it's just so powerful to kind of create a contagion of positive change that's my little phrase for it so Andrew over to you I'd love to give you the floor sure thanks Sally um so direct relief I just to talk about the click connection a little bit in that context as well. So Direct Relief has been using click as a kind of core element of how we analyze and interpret data for humanitarian aid since 2015. The goal of Direct Relief is to uh, access uh, at scale private medical resources and transfer them efficiently to people and institutions throughout the world that need access to uh, medicines, medical supplies, and other uh, medical resources, cash-based funding for medical infrastructure like power and oxygen, et cetera, um, it, it, you know, so that we can make that as uh, low cost and effective as possible. And we've built upon that over 
time, uh, the capacity to integrate data sources from a pretty wide variety of areas that allow us to contextualize that effort as well. So, you know, looking at, I mentioned before, uh, kind of large scale private data flows for public good. I mean, one of the things I spend a lot of time doing is taking uh, the metadata from social media uh, or satellite imagery, uh, remotely sensed imagery that allows us to understand uh, damage after a disaster and merge those into uh, models that we can apply to understand what happened to a community, um, where did people go, what are the pressures that health infrastructure may be experiencing, um, and how do we kind of factor that in to modeling demand for um, medications on a charitable basis, right? What do people need that they cannot otherwise access? To what degree is um, an event surpassing their capacity to respond, which is where we kind of step in as an institution to reduce suffering and make sure that we have continuity of services. So, um, you know, in terms of like, you know, real world impact on all of these kinds of things. I mean, uh, you know, in the Ukraine war, one of the things that we've been doing um, is making sure there's sort of two main uh, kind of fronts to this on the humanitarian side. One is actually support for health institutions throughout Ukraine itself. And so we manage data flows to understand both that demand and where all of that medical aid needs to go. And it's a very dynamic situation um, in terms of, uh, you know, a unpredictable course to the war, which has radically changed what the demand is over time. So there is one piece of that that really is focused on analysis of, you know, need for uh, renal therapies, need for a um, uh, orthopedic therapy, need for uh, maternal and child health, um, control of infectious disease uh, from COVID to tuberculosis and other things throughout the country. On the other front has been the largest refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. Um, and this has meant that there's a need for, A, understanding the dimensions of that crisis because the area is enormous. It covers the entire European Union, although some countries more than others. And then it may not be the most appropriate model of support to direct, um, you know, kind of shipments of medical aid to places that actually have functioning medical systems like Poland, actually, which has actually a pretty decent medical system. So we've been uh, working on a understanding, you know, the work that I mentioned before to look at those flows of refugees, uh, you know, in novel ways to understand that demand signal and then partnering with groups like Pelion, uh, which is a um, health data and financial services uh, company within Poland to be able to do, uh, say, cash transfers that will go towards um, enabling refugees to purchase goods that they need at the network of pharmacies throughout Poland so we can reduce the pressure on the Ministry of Health. And then we can get a feedback signal from that that we link into that um, analysis of where refugees are to understand those changing pressures and then get out ahead of, well, what are the changes Changes we're likely to see coming. Where are you going to need goods the most? What kind of goods? Um, you know, for instance, uh, just one example, thyroid medication becomes really important. Uh, we've seen this in the signal for uh, refugees in Poland. Why? Because of the um, Chernobyl nuclear disaster. It creates a long-term need for thyroid medication in many people from Ukraine. And you see this showing up in the pharmacy data across, uh, across Poland. So that means that we also need to then think about ways that we can ensure that um, you know, we're responding to this particular kind of signal that you wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily and unless you're really, really in depth on on Ukraine beforehand, or uh, you know you have some other kind of special knowledge, you might not actually know that. So, so that really helps us to then really be targeted in the response effort. Such great examples, Andrew. There really, I think that interconnectedness. You can almost visualize. I'm quite a visual person, as you were describing that. You can almost see, you almost see the lights connecting. You know, like that network that map coming to life as you were explaining the connections there, and and things that could be hidden within those signals as well. So, really fantastic examples there as well about that power of data. And you reminded me of another project too, because I love the different examples about how data was empowering that understanding there of you know evolving needs or expectations or behaviors in so many different ways. 
and again those interrelationships um but one other thing that sprung to mind as well is is the ukraine situation one other area i think maybe the the role of data is underexplored about for example how it can help preserve identity um so i did a project there very much in the education space and it wasn't just about you know preserving access to education if you've been displaced to a different country it's about preserving curriculum it's about preserving your self identity and your country identity there's such a cultural aspect to, to that data too so just wanted to mention that as well because i just there really are so many ways that we can apply data for good if we address these challenges and really come together as well so again i'm loving that kind of collaboration that's coming to the fore here too so brilliant points um and Andrew, I'd love to come back to you about Click World shortly as well. But before I do, I'm just going to bring in, because they're really natural fit, another audience question. So this is about kind of looking ahead. We were naturally going there as well, because Andrew, as you mentioned there, how do we get ahead of some of these challenges and kind of not exactly future proof, but have the best foundations possible to be more, say, kind of ambidextrous to these different changes? So I'm getting asked a lot of questions around kind of what next? How can we get ahead? Um, and one of the areas that's coming a lot up a lot here is around some of the measurement challenges as well. I think we all know in the social impact or um, say, you know, non, non for profit space, measurement of impact can be a challenge. And it's so key, you know, in terms of getting people you know, on board and together around that vision, it can be really important for funding, lots of different things. And now with the rise of ESG measurement as well, I'm getting a lot of questions around that. And again, quite complex data challenges there as well, you know, internal, external sources, uh, scope one to scope three, different organizations say reporting internally but how do you make that you know consistent comparable um checks between different organizations you know whether you're a consumer or maybe a funder or a partner so lots going on in that space so a bit of an open question there about where we're heading next what do we need to overcome to scale further change so i will throw that out but i think i might go to you judy first if that's okay i'd love to bring you back in on that what you're seeing um you know around the ecosystem what people are asking you for for support yeah, certainly. And, and, and thank you for the question. Um, it is a challenging one um, because, you know, part of my role actually at Click as a private sector company is reporting our metrics around ESG. So I own that process as a private sector organization as well. So I kind of see both sides of it, the, the need for supporting organizations collecting that data and trying to standardize it, as well as an or from the standpoint of an organization needing to report such, in, such information. It is challenging, right? But data can really, again, lead the way. Um, and, you know, we've built applications for ourselves, for our customers, actually, to let's say, measure and reduce their environmental footprint. Um, one such example would be our partnership with the United Nations, um, reporting their CO2 emissions from air travel and creating a dashboard that helps them understand where the greatest emissions are coming from, how to charge that back to the booking department, and how to make better decisions going forward. What class of airfare, how to travel, uh, whether taking uh, the train is a better option, all of that is built into this analytics dashboard for the travel department at the United Nations, and it's very powerful. So Data can play a role in all of these aspects by creating that level of access to information as well as certainty around the reporting that information according to the latest and greatest standards and, uh, and then helping people at the point of decision make better decisions about future kind of uh, needs, if you will, not just rear view mirror reporting right, which a lot of companies do and publish this nice, glossy, elegant report every year and post it on their website. What we're talking about is actually taking that data and integrating it and putting it in the hands of the people making the decisions to reduce going forward. And that's what tools like Click can really drive is this, again, mindset that's not just about last year's inventory. It's about making decisions to go forward and make the right decisions that we that we all need to make. And um, from a standard standpoint, you know, our work with so many incredible nonprofits like Direct Relief and C40 Cities um, has led us to these great partnerships with the UN uh, in New York around kind of reporting the progress towards the sustainable development goals with the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNFCCC in Bonn, Germany, 
using Click to help member states actually adhere to and measure their progress against climate action plans. Um, so we we are kind of not only you know working with individual organizations, but also focused on partnering with you know these organizations at at the pinnacle of of trying to sort all of this out, right? <laughs> trying to sort out how do we measure and how do we achieve these goals that we set for ourselves. And, you know, and we just, we feel very privileged to have a seat at that table, um, to have those conversations, to again, take what, and Hal mentioned the science-based data-driven approach Absolutely. to uh, achieving these goals and measuring the progress to, to help us achieve them. Love that. And a thing that was ringing through my ears as you were speaking there, Julie, was that the power to give people agency to make those informed choices. I think a really practical example there you were sharing about the UN and those travel choices as well. And with that dashboarding, again, if we've got, we can't have like measurements that are all siloed and segmented, for example, around ESG, if we're bringing these together, so it's part of kind of your operational decision-making, everything's integrated, it makes it far simpler. The complexity is a bit, a big challenge for everybody, isn't it, at the moment? So again, when we're bringing in new requirements, it's so, so important, we still need to make it easier to actually actualize those. And I think what you're doing click what i love there is a that support of the ecosystem but b the fact you're helping to make it easier to do these right things you know and it's not just a transparency of the data it's being backed up with accountability as well so i think that's a huge difference and, and really really important and funnily enough you know, when you mentioned the un there's a big un uk uh, women event that's going on at the moment for, for for two weeks which i'm really involved in and that agency for change is really recurring as a theme and and helping people from a technology and data standpoint but also from a skills and a skills competence confidence as well to actually apply that in their role uh, and speak up about these things as well. So really, really interesting areas as well. Um, at this point, I'd love to throw back to Andrew just to talk a little bit more around Click World and the particular session that you're involved in there, Andrew, because I think it's a great one. There's so many picks and I just want to just spend a few more moments talking about that because, again, my flight is booked. Really, really exciting. So la landing there ahead of Click World on the 27th of April. So not long to go. And again, just want to tease uh, a few of the sessions, particularly around data and technology for a good for our audience. So, Andrew, if I could throw that over to you. Well, we're going to do our best to keep you entertained, Sally. But, Excellent. Um, Looking forward to it. <laughs> it is Las Vegas, so you know we got to do what we can. Um, I am going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about. Um, a project that I mentioned earlier, actually, that we worked with Click really extensively on um, and uh, got some tremendous, not just like software input, but really uh, kind of collaborative thought with their team around um, how do you take some of these large scale flows of information from uh, social media platforms that help us to understand, you know, where uh, the population change signals are strongest that we can do what I mentioned earlier around uh, resource allocation, anticipation of needs, pressurization of infrastructure uh, usage, um, and then make that something which is um, both sensible to us and sensible to others. Because, you know, I don't think that when we do data analysis at Direct Relief, it ought to stop with Direct Relief. Um, you know, when we are looking at a particular, um, you know, signal that is useful for reasons that go beyond just our kind of specific lane within humanitarian response, I think we have an ethical responsibility to share that and to make it intelligible across the board. So in the case of the refugee response, I mean, we took the same work um, and we pushed it towards our colleagues at the World Bank uh, to um, the ministries uh, at the national and the municipal level uh, within Poland. Uh, we worked with the uh, city government in Budapest. Uh, we worked with UNICEF and UNHCR to make sure that as we're doing this work and as we're putting this into an analytics platform, a visualization platform that makes sense of complex data, that we're you know, doing our part to inform the response broadly and not only our own decision making. And so how that happened, how that kind of process comes together to transform information itself into humanitarian aid um, 
is what we're going to be talking about. So hope to see you there. Absolutely. I will be. Absolutely. I will be there in person. I can't wait. Honestly, it's fantastic. And I think, you know, I run a, a non-for-profit series as well, kind of shining a light on kind of tech for good kind of impact stories, but also the people behind that too, you know, bringing those stories to the fore. What I'd love to do as well, perhaps on another day, we can all come back together and kind of share some some advice and learnings around that, too, because I'm I'm building up this kind of visibility of role models in the industry, you know, like kind of from age seven to I think 97 is the oldest now. Um, but it literally is looking at diversity in the industry from the broadest possible spectrum. I'm, I'm doing something this afternoon on neurodiversity as an example of that as well. But I think all three of you have so much kind of passion and experience and also just showing kind of the dynamism dynamism really of this space, too. I mean, what an incredible place to be to be able to contribute to some of these you know massive problems which we have but how we can overcome that by coming together and using data technology but at the end of the day people culture and skills all these elements coming together to affect that change so I'm really loving what I'm hearing there I know we're getting short of time so what I'd like to do kind of in our wrap around to kind of close things off just for today perhaps if I could bring Andrew back in now I know we spoke about your session at Click World a little bit earlier but perhaps as a way to end it if we could share either kind of something you're really looking forward to around the event coming up something again people can get involved in and learn from about how they can apply data for good in their particular industry or you know for example sharing the family etc too i wonder if i could do that andrew and then we'll go around the room so to speak and kind of share either a top tech take top piece of advice or something to look forward to when we all come together in a few weeks time so andrew over to you first sorry no actually um angel sorry over to you first yeah okay so um what I'm looking for is getting back to see everyone uh, live, finally. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yes. And um, there's lots of things going on. Uh, uh, we have this longstanding um, promise of, of business analytics or data analytics. Uh, make informed decisions. Yes. But when we are making those decisions uh, on the uh, data for good uh, scope, those decisions impact thousands or millions of, of people. So it's crucial to have the right data at the right time uh, presented in, the, in a clear, concise, precise way. And that's what Click is helping us do, and uh, not only for ourselves, but to share it with so, so, many, uh, so, so many people. So uh, the, the climate, uh, climate action is, is, is urgent, and it's not our business only uh, as as ngos it's, it's it's in everyone's hands and we at c40 with with clicks uh, help and, and technology are making that uh, the information available for everyone to to take that uh, action and make their part love that play your part i love that and again i think the session and all your work generally at c40 cities as well is really helping that actualization piece and again that sharing helps more and more people to be involved and have the confidence to do so as well you know i think so many people want to make a difference sometimes it's that how that can feel quite messy and complicated i think we're really starting to unpack that here brilliant stuff um andrew if i could go to you next with the same question and then julie to wrap things up i'll close with you if i may um well Without repeating what Anhel said about coming back together, which I think is maybe one of the core aspects here after years of uh, not being able to do this during the pandemic. But um, I think one of the real values and the things that I think is kind of the reason to to be excited about events like this is the that we, we sit within the middle of a bunch of different complex problems. Um, and I need to learn uh, about how to solve those problems, how to understand those problems from a pretty wide variety of people. Often I find, you know, I learn from uh, business analysts, I learn from scientists, I learn from other nonprofits, I learn from Angel uh, on this particular podcast. So, um, you know, I think it's necessary to be really kind of cross-functional in how we think about these problems. So the ability to kind of do all that at once is, is I think, pretty exciting. So looking forward to that. Love it. Absolutely. I think, you know, I'm a big uh, proponent about STEAM skills, kind of that move beyond STEM. And I think, again, you know, it takes so much innovation and creativity from one particular vertical or different organization. Get that mixed together. You can create something, you know, very, very new if you apply it somewhere different. So that inter interdisciplinary skills, that holism of thinking and just you know, getting different perspectives on an issue so so important and i couldn't agree more about just the, the joy practically you know of coming together again i absolutely love it so brilliant stuff and julie if i can close with you let's let's kind of share a little bit more about that beauty of all coming together for click 
world and maybe just a final nugget of advice to share with the audience. Thank you. Um, it's going to be an exciting event, Sally, and we're really looking forward to it. And I'm really looking forward to hosting and Hel and Andrew as well. Um, there was a big sustainability theme in this year's event, which we're excited about. And uh, we encourage everyone to stop by the sustainability booth, which will be inside the uh, the uh, venue, um, to meet Andrew and Angel and myself and discuss, you know, the opportunities for our private sector customers and partners to get involved. Right? I mean, we we love to kind of talk not only about what what Click has done and what our software has done. Um, but we we want to talk with all of our customers and partners about opportunities that they have to actually you know create a better world and uh, because we very strongly believe that you know th with the efforts of the private sector um, we can achieve these goals with regards to humanitarian relief and climate change and all of that but it takes all of us. And so, you know, I just encourage, you know, everyone attending Click World to stop by and, and have a discussion about, you know, how they too can get involved and maybe leverage their strengths within their organization to support organizations like C40 and Direct Relief and others. Brilliant. I can't wait. I think I'm going to be camped out pretty much around the sustainability booth, actually, because, <laughs> yeah, again, I, I can't wait to share more about that, too, um, live on site. I think that'd be excellent. Also, I think I love the fact, you know, for me, sustainability considerations and ESG is this whole point about, you know, being baked in by design. And that's what I really appreciate that, you know, to the extent as well, you know, Click World being carbon neutral event as well. So the fact all these different considerations are being baked in, it's really, really critical. And I'll be sharing some news also about a new index launch to help kind of in, in improve so the consistency and comparability of measurement around all things ESG live from Click World as well so lots and lots to look forward to I know we're kind of out of time now but hopefully I think we've set the scene for everyone watching and listening out there about what to expect some of the key trends expectation behavioral changes but overall how data and technology can be that vital empowerment that vital foundation to scale sustainable change with meaning so more on this later we're going to be sharing lots more around some of the examples Examples we've shared here but for now it's a wrap from me this episode of tomorrow's tech today julie angel andrew a pleasure to have you here thanks so much for joining us thanks sally thank you sally thank you. i am even more excited now about, about the, the event lovely <laughs> love that thank you so much brilliant and thank you all for watching and listening to see you all soon thanks for listening to this episode of tomorrow's tech today if you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe to us and leave a review. It really means a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and see more behind the scenes video footage on YouTube. Thanks for listening.